Well, thank you for having us. Um, I'm Jane Trudeau. I'm chairman of the Friends of the Council on Aging. And our panel is here today to tell you about our new program, OWL, or Older, Wiser, Lifelong Learners. And we brought our OWL with us. But um, to my left is Mickey Kazam, who's been working on the curriculum committee, who's a member of the Friends of the Council on Aging, Elaine Smith, who's also been helping to find courses and find teachers and is a member of the Friends of the Council on Aging. And Marion Kilson, who was on the Council on Aging board, but who's been working on our curriculum committee. I mean, we consider this a collaboration with the Council on Aging. Um, just a brief word that the Friends is a nonprofit, 501c3, we raise money. All our money goes to the senior center. In the last three years, we've given over $50,000. And in the past, we've bought equipment, audio-visual exercise equipment. We've helped fund LexConnect, the discounted taxi service. And um, we support our popular exercise classes. But this time, we're doing something different. We applied for a grant from the Dana Home Foundation because we wanted to do even more. We launched OWL. The idea was to pilot a community-wide, affordable, daytime learning program for seniors 60 and over. We charge only $25 for a four or five session course, and financial aid is available with a phone call. Um, our program focuses on providing knowledge in the fields of literature, science, the arts, and history. But Mickey, Elaine, and Marion uh, will tell you about our winter offerings, which will start the week of February 18th. Mickey? Thank you, Jane. Uh, I'm so pleased to announce that Jacqueline Schwab has agreed to present an exciting new winter program for our, our series. The program is entitled Vintage and Traditional Music of the British Isles and America. Through her playing, Jacqueline will explore many of the different musical styles of these countries, and then she'll play them and present them in creative in meditative and in spirited arrangements in a four-part series. Jacqueline, you may know, has performed over a dozen of Ken Burns documentaries, including his Grammy Award-winning Civil War, as well as Baseball, Mark Twain, uh, the National Parks, and Dust Bowl. Jacqueline has also performed at the White House with singer, with Scottish singer Jean Redpath for President Clinton. She has appeared on the Prairie Home Companion. She has been on David Letterman's show. Uh, so she's had a lot of experience and she's fairly well known. She's been a dance musician for, for many years, and she plays for many different styles of dancing. Jacqueline is a graduate of the New England Conservatory of Music, where she majored in piano improvisation. Her presentations will be held at the Fallen Community Church on Mass Ave in Lexington, uh, and they will be held on four consecutive Tuesdays from 10 to 12 noon, starting on Tuesday, February 25th, March 4th, March 11th, and March 18th. I think this should be a thrilling and exciting series, and I hope you'll join us. Thank you. Uh, Elaine, would you like to tell us about uh I think Mary. Oh, Marion. Yes, I'd like to talk briefly about 
artist books. Uh, printmaker Teresa Monaco is going to give us an understanding of artist books, beginning perhaps with the Book of Kells and going on through Matisse and uh, William Blake to contemporary artists who make books. And she herself is a maker of artist books. Teresa is uh, the retired uh, chair of the art department at Emmanuel College. She did her undergraduate degree at Emmanuel and she did her MFA at Syracuse University. She's nationally acclaimed as a printmaker and well known in the Boston area. And I think she, I wanted to give you a sense of her from an excerpt from an interview that she gave to Art New England a number of years ago for their 30th anniversary. I think it will give you a good sense of her tone and the kind of understanding that she will bring. She says, my artwork explores and interprets memory, both the memory inherent in living beings and inorganic things. Using light and dark as expressive qualities, the subject that I have explored over the years is human portrait. And then I'm going to skip a bit down to her saying, throughout the years I have, I have combined both word and image to produce artist books that use etchings, traditional letterpress, and currently computer-generated type. I am in the process of working on another artist book, Sicilian Vespers, using computer-generated prints and type. An ink print, print, Sicilian Vespers, originated as a large portrait drawing and was then combined on the computer with additional drawings, layered textures, and words. It will be the frontispiece of computer-generated prints and words interpreting memories of my Sicilian heritage. So I think, as uh, Nikki has described uh, Jacqueline Schwab's contribution, this also promises to be a wonderful experience for people who have interest in the visual arts. And uh, this will be offered for Thursdays, beginning of uh, February 20th. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce um, Elaine Smith, who's going to talk about a very exciting science program. Elaine? Thank you. Well, we're going to turn 180 degrees, I guess, from art and music uh, to neuroscience. Uh, stay with us, because this is neuroscience for the layperson. I'm very pleased that we have four professors coming from the Neuroscience Department at Wellesley College, each of whom will give one lecture. Uh, each lecture is an hour and a half in length, and uh, they have four different exciting topics in neuroscience. Uh, I have yet to meet anybody who isn't really uh, excited about what uh, this is going to uh, entail. But the first uh, lecturer is Barbara Belts. Barbara's a, actually a chaired professor of neuroscience at Wellesley. She was one of the initiators of the neuroscience program there, which has been going on for at least 20 years now. And actually, Barbara is a Lexington resident, which makes it rather nice. Um, the uh, title of her lecture uh, is New Neurons in Adult Brains, Stem Cell Surprises. Well, that sort of gets you thinking. This talk uh, will focus on the production of new neurons in the adult brains of humans and other organisms. What are the adult born, the adult born neurons doing? How are their numbers regulated? Are more neurons better? Who knows? We don't know. What is the source of the stem cells producing these neurons? These are questions that we as individuals might ask, and these are questions which will be discussed by her, and she will try to enlighten us uh, on this aspect of neuroscience. 
and probably will talk a little bit about what she's actually doing in this way in her own lab. The next lecturer is Sharon Gobes. Sharon is an assistant professor in the neuroscience program and the title of her lecture is Singing in the Brain, Bird Brains, <laughs> Amnesiacs, and the Neuroscience Behind It. They're catchy, aren't they? <laughs> uh, and what she, how she explains what she's going to do uh, is as follows. Uh, in neuroscience, we study how the brain regulates behavior and mental processes. One of the most intriguing questions that we have yet to be answered is how a collection of cells can contain a memory. Much of the knowledge about where in the brain memories are stored was acquired in the previous century from patients with brain damage. These days, searching for the engram of memory often involves model organisms, like songbirds, that learn their songs and have memories similar to those for speech in humans. In her lecture, as she says, we will look at how memory works in humans and what we can learn from songbirds. On March 5th, Mark Tattel, uh, associate professor in the neuroscience program, is going to talk about from decision making to deal making, how hormones influence our brains and behavior. And in his talk, he's going to explore how steroid hormones, including estrogens, progestins, and androgens, act in the brain to influence behavior and decision making. We've all got these hormones in us, you know. So we might as well learn what's going on with them. We will briefly discuss work from the Tattel lab on how steroid hormones act in the brain to influence brain development and behavior. And then he's going to discuss some studies from other labs. This is fascinating. On the emerging and exciting field of neuroeconomics, the neuroscience of decision making. We will explore how hormones may contribute to differences in decision making between men and women. Finally, our fourth lecture will be given by Bevel Conway, also an associate professor and an initial uh, starter of the neuroscience program at Wellesley. And the title of his program, The Neuroscience and Culture of Color. And I was fascinated by your comments about artist and, uh, and color because uh, one of the things he does is to use uh, uh, impressionist paintings mm -hmm. for people when they, uh, when you see the painting, the color you see is very much influenced by the colors around it. And uh, whereas if an artist chooses a color blue and it has white around it, you won't have the same effect on your, what your eyes see as a, 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 another uh, actual color next to it. I know so, that from weaving. That's also okay. true. Weaving. Yeah, the same, the, mm -hmm. the same uh, idea. But what he says is, we all enjoy color, yet the way in which color is encoded by the brain remains a mystery. Recent advances in neuroscience are shedding light on the neural mechanisms, and in the process we're obtaining new insight into the ways that cultures use colors. So it's a whole, uh, hopefully, if we can we'll get some understanding of the neuroscience behind it and understand what's happening in the artist's brain as he's producing uh, his uh, work. So I think this will be very exciting. I would just say that all of these uh, four uh, instructors have are experienced in not only with teaching advanced courses, but they all take pleasure too 
in teaching introductory courses. So uh, this would be like probably what you might find on NPR uh, in a NOVA program, uh, which I think many of us have enjoyed. So I look, uh, I personally am looking forward to this and hope uh, to see many of you. Uh, it will start on February 19th. It's going to be given on Wednesday afternoons from 2 to 3.30 p.m. in the Parish Center of St. Bridget Church. It's a large room and we can accommodate uh, a large number. So uh, um, we look forward to uh, those of anybody who uh, is interested in taking part. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I think finally Mary will talk about our fourth course which is also a quartet. Which is a That's quartet, right. <laughs> um, which will also be quite accessible. Yes, and the, uh, the, this quartet is going to be four poets who are from the Boston, greater Boston area reading some of their own poetry. And um, so let me tell you who they will be. The first who will be uh, reading his poetry at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, the, on February 18th, will be Tom Daly. And quite a number of Lexingtonians already know Tom because he teaches in the Lexington Community Education Program, memoir, memoir writing, uh, poetry, and also he has been offering courses on particular poets. Emily Dickinson, Gerard Manley Hopkins, and I think he's going to do Robert Frost this winter. And uh, he often offers both the memoir and the poet courses at the senior center. So he's quite well known to many Lexingtonians already and has a devoted following. And <clears throat> he will be uh, followed by Florence Ladd, who is also a published poet, who is also a novelist. Her first novel was called Sarah's Song, and she has two others slated to come out within the next 24 months. Uh, but she uh, has written most recently about her ancestors on the, uh, in North Carolina before the Civil War. And she has been published in the Women's Review of Books. The Progressive, The Brockers Review, Sweet Auburn, Beyond Slavery, and Transition. And our third uh, poet will be Gavin Moses, who is also uh, a published poet. His po poems have appeared in Appalachian Heritage, A Gathering of Tribes, The World, Long Shot, and In the Tradition. And he is a founding member of Poets Four, a New York City jazz blue poetry collective. In 1991, after winning a semifinal slam at the New Orican Poets Cafe, Gavin became a finalist in the Grand Slam. He was a member of New York City's National Poetry Slam team, and his poem, A Polaroid, is, a Polaroid Existence, was the closing monologue in Liz Swados's Cantata 2000 at the American Repertory Theater. He is a Pushcart push Poetry Prize nominee, and he currently lives in Cambridge, which is why he can come to us. And our final poet will be Claire Keyes, who has published reviews and poems in the Women's Review of Books, Kalis, and Prairie Schooner. And online, you can find her work at Verse Wisconsin, Newport Review, Umbrella Journal, and Red-Headed Stepchild. She won the Robert Penn Warren Award from New England Writers, as well as the first prize in poetry from Smartish Pace. The recipient of a grant in poetry from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, she also received a poetry fellowship from the Wurlitz Foundation in Taos, New Mexico. The Question of Rapture, a book of poems, was published in 2008, and Rising and Falling won the Foothills Poetry Chapbook Contest. She lives in Marblehead, and she's Emeritus Professor of English at Salem State University. So 
four very different voices will be able to be heard and I think each one of them will be very engaging and at least three of them will read a poem at our kickoff reception that Jane's going to tell more about. So I hope you will all join us for both the kickoff and the class. If we piqued your curiosity, you can meet many of these teachers um, on January 14th in the large room at the library. You can also register for our classes there. And we're, it's an open invitation, there'll be re refreshments. We hope you'll join us. If you want to register but are not able to come to the reception, there are application forms at the Senior Center. The Lexington Community Ed booklet that's coming out now has a registration form. Also, uh, Lexington Community Ed is online, and you can print the registration form and mail it in. We have a post office box um, that you can send it to. So you can register by mail. You can register in person at the Senior Center. You can register in person uh, at our reception but also um, you can register by mail. Also, if you go on to the Lexington Town site, you get into the Lexington Senior Bulletin, which has a whole page and has our registration form. So at any rate, I think when we all started this program, I mean, we had a vision of offering something different for the Senior Center, something that was maybe more intellectual, um, and we had four courses in the fall, and 90 people registered. I mean, it says there are people who, and people who didn't always come to the Senior Center, that there is an audience for this kind of program. And it's been, I would think they would all admit, it's been tremendous fun. It's Absolutely. been tremendous fun, and the quality of our teachers, probably beyond anything we Super. anticipated when we started recruiting. We have been very fortunate. Mm -hmm. So we hope you'll join us. We're, we invite you to join us in two ways. One, come to our reception, meet the teachers, register for our courses. But many of you may have received our annual appeal, which went out last week. And for the many programs that we fund, uh, the Dana Home Foundation uh, does cover most of the cost of this, but all the money that we raise goes for the Senior Center, for programming, and for, I sound like NPR, for quality programming <laughs> that you, uh, that we've been telling you about. Thank you.